Attention all listeners, this podcast is now sponsored by the author of XI, a collection of poetry on being human, written by Andrew Joseph Zaragoza Jr. Release date is going to be August 15th. Pre-order is available now. More information located on the bio. Thank you, and looking forward to hearing from you soon. Now on with the podcast. Hello, welcome back to um, uh, 27 Dresses uh, Film Review. Just kidding. <laughs> it's, welcome back to the channel, Nights of Horror. My name is Sam. As always, we got Tony. Today we've got a very special guest on, uh, what is this, episode 107? 108. 108, man. Math is hard for me sometimes. We got the, the homie Scaredy Cat Vasquez here. We're just going to call him Scaredy Cat, though. Uh, say what's up to the uh, wonderful wa- uh, watchers and listeners today, bro. How's it going? So honored to be here right now, man. I'm like, I'm excited. It's good to see, to talk to other haunters. I get excited because, you know, we've all been, we've all been segregated into our houses. We're not right. the segregated. We've all been separated, I mean, and just like, you know, it's good, it's good to have human contact. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, bro, definitely. I definitely understand what you mean, like. Uh, I we before we got on camera, we, we, you had asked me what my thoughts were about uh, the Midsummer Lights live stream here. Right, yeah. I didn't chime in, but you know, I like to save all the good conversation for uh, for the camera here. Uh, but I thought it was a really good. I thought it was a really good time. And what I said in that video was, I think it was very much needed for everyone in the community, whether you watched it live or you know if you watched it a bit later. You know, just to to see other people out there, you know, still trying to find ways to celebrate the season. Um, so that was pretty sick. Um, and it was just good to, it was cool to see some, um, you know, familiar faces on there, um, you know, with um, some people, you know, some people we're fans of on our channel, um, mm-hmm. like Rick West um, and Ivory Chiss Littles. I believe that's how you pronounce their first name, right? Hey, you're spot Andre. on today. Dang, really? Hey, hey. <laughs> Must be that shower I just took. Woke <laughs> me up. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it was sick. What, I mean, what did you think about it, Scary Cat? It was good. Again, it was much needed. I, I was enjoying just going through, like, the... You know, like people would send in photos and then they would post it up on there. I thought it was just nice to see everyone's photos, you know, from their perspective of, you know, their memories of Midsummer Scream. You know, it was like a little, it was like a slideshow of a trip down memory lane and it was uh, very nostalgic. I think that's the word. Yeah, right? I'm yeah. Cool for it. Okay, thank you. Bro, uh, same. Uh, English is my first language. I'm still learning it, so. Right? Yo, like, <laughs> it's hard sometimes, man. It's like, uh, but, um, yeah, so it was it was really interesting. Of course, seeing Rick West was cool. You know, seeing him talk on there, and I was I was actually listening to you guys' podcast with him on there. Which I'm a little low key jealous. I haven't had him on my podcast. You guys got him on yours. I was like, yo, these guys are, yo, they moving up, they moving up. In hey the man, world, man. Hey, we're trying, man. We're trying. We're, we're trying. You guys every are working day. really hard, and I, I love what you guys do, man. Yeah, same with us, man. I mean, it, it's uh. It's funny how we met, man. It, it really is. I mean, it was literally in line for uh, Lullaby at Queen Mary. Yeah, uh, so I remember seeing you with your GoPro and your hat. Right. And I was talking to you about that. Right? Was that you? Yeah. Yeah, it was me. And, uh, yeah, and then, like, you gave me your card, and I checked out that channel that same night, and I was talking to my fiance. I was like, damn, these guys are really good in the GoPro stuff and everything. And then I think we met again at, uh, were you guys at Terror and Train Town for uh, the Bloodshed Brothers? Yes. Right there. Every, every both those times we've met, I was shocked at how tall you are, man. You know I mean, like on camera, like you just look like normal height, you look like an average person. But then when I saw you at, at Dark Harbor, and then when, like when I saw you again at Bloodshot, I was like, oh damn, this guy's like really tall. Okay, no, he's he's tiny. He's a little guy. He's petite. He's like five foot. Just uh, he's, no, a, he's yeah. a little guy. The channel. It, it was very interesting of how we met. I mean, like, like I said, we were literally just waiting in line to get into a uh, lullaby. And uh, we see him, and he, he calls me out on the GoPro, and then talks, and we start talking about you know our channels, and we start talking about you know equipment, uh, and it just it just kind of took off from there. He followed me, I followed him, uh, and we, we, we keep up every now and then. And finally, I you know a whole year later, I know we've been talking about this for some time, but we've actually been talking about uh, collabing with each other for some time, and and I don't think right now is a better time than than ever to do it. I mean. You know, I'm sorry it did take so long, I but I, I think since, you know, we're, where the world's at right now, I think this is the perfect time to get everybody together and spread some positivity, man. No, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, also, I, I just want to say big congrats on your recent engagement. Um, 
so you know it's a big step in life so big congrats Thank on you, that man. of course Thank you. excited so, we we like you know we were a little nervous you know just because of the whole pandemic stuff we're like all right we got to make sure we got hand sanitizer all over the place which we do <laughs> and you know um make sure everyone's safe that's uh, you know it's a little nerve-wracking with that but other than that we're just we're just happy to finally do it it's been six years you know we were already talking about it within like the second year so four four years of waiting it was like all right that's too much you know we just want to like be able to do this and uh yeah just start our lives together you know that's it man that's, that, it. that's always definitely. a wonderful thing in life so uh speaking of starting um Tell us how you got into, you know, doing podcasts and doing YouTube. Uh, YouTube came first. It was uh, just a matter of like, you know, I've always wanted to do something creative. I like, you know, editing photos and stuff like that. Like, you know, I, I used to do video editing, like for some like projects at school, you know, for like our like little school news team that we had. And um, so I was like, you know, I miss doing that type of stuff. And then I was like, you know, I rarely ever see this. People talk about the haunt industry. You know, I've, I've gone around, I've been going to haunts for a while now, so I have a, I've already gained somewhat knowledge of it. Why not, like, you know, you know, start talking about it and everything and, um, you know, just hopefully try to get other people into it as well, you know, just to kind of spread the message like, look, you know, Halloween is a, is a lifestyle. It, like, if that is your lifestyle, it's there's nothing wrong with you. It's completely fine. There's a lot of nice people out there, which is the one thing I always like to, but going to spook show, Salem's Market, all the stuff that happens on the off season. It's like, look, you get to meet all these vendors that sell like crazy looking voodoo dolls and coffin shaped this and coffin shaped that. And it's like, yo, they're just regular people that work nine to fives. And when on the weekends, you know, they like to get like a little spooky and, you know, just try to do what they love, you know, make a, make a, whatever it be like a craft, music, whatever it be. Um, just always wanted to just show and like enlighten the community that is the haunt community and the Halloween community. And, you know, the podcast just came to be with just like, you know, uh, everyone else is doing a podcast. Might as well try it out. I talk a lot. So why not record it? Um, and then again, it was just another way to just show people other people's skills. You know, it's like I had like an artist on there. Like I had the great Sammy Ruiz on there. You guys know him for his music and his art. Had him on there, you know, had scare actors on there, other people that worked in haunts you know, either design or directing them. And so it's just a matter of like, again, showing and enlightening the community and um, just with any kind of platform I can provide, you know? Right, no, definitely. That's uh, exactly, I think we have the same mindset we're going there, man. That's exactly what we're, oh. our goal is, is just kind of celebrate Halloween and horror year round, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. it is, like you said, a lifestyle for some people and, and some people look forward to this season every year and some people look forward to, going to these haunts and, and celebrating Halloween. And I think that's what we try to do on our channel, much like how you're doing with yours is, you know, you want to expand that lifestyle and, 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 you know, show the people what there is to do in the off season. If you want to keep going with that lifestyle, which, you know, that's just our, our job is just to get the word out there for these, for these uh, fanatics that, that really want to just enjoy and, and love the haunt season year round. And, um, I really like what you're doing with your channel too, uh, and you explore a lot of things that are not really well known too, uh, which is really cool because it, it sheds some light into uh, either companies or people that are trying to make it out there to um, come out more. And you 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 open your platform for those companies to come in uh, and really do that, which is really cool. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, when you when you first started, you know. You know, you knew you wanted to do Halloween stuff. You knew you wanted to do haunt stuff. Did you ever want to? Was it always just about the uh, the Halloween and horror stuff, or did you ever want to expand it? Or did you, how did you want to? Where do you see yourself going with uh, going forward with it? Um, there's always talks of of expanding, and especially dealing with um, this dealing with the pandemic now, where it's like, all right, you know, not really posting out any more content as much content as I was I'd like because there's no chance of going to haunts. You know, as we've all been, he's seen the casualties of uh, like, you know, some of the, the big four, except for Hayride. I, correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't heard anything from Hayride. Hayride's but, got uh, plans you know, A, B, C, D and plans. So they're, they're trying to do something regardless this year. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. But, you know, Dark Harbor, Knott's, Universal, they're all like, you know, canceling this year, which is it's fine. It's understandable because it's for the safety of others. Um, you know, so it's like, uh yeah, there's always talk of expansion, especially after dealing with this, where it's like, all right, in case, God forbid, something like this ever were to happen, 
could I still provide a source of entertainment and a source of like, you know, still providing a platform for other people out there, like, you know, safely. Now, of course, thank God for Zoom, because, you know, we're able to do things like this right now, you know, can get someone else on and talk about their business or whatever. Right. Um, which, you know, I've been doing with a um, little, little spoiler alert, Black Mass will be coming up on and there's a Zoom interview talking about their latest work. And, um, you know, but there has been other talks, nothing like too far out, still going to stick with something creepy. You know, like we've talked about doing some paranormal stuff. Uh, but that that's, uh, that's something I'm a little too afraid of, though. You know what I mean? So I don't know. That's I need some like good, why, like, you know, that's why they call me. you scaredy cat. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's something that's something a little too, too freaky for me, though, you know, because I've, I've dealt with it un, involuntarily. And it's like, oh, God, <laughs> I don't know if I can like actually go out like Zach Bagans and be like, show yourself. It's like, no, I, no, no don't show yourself, it. but you no, know, show us that you're here, but just don't make it too scary. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Casually um, for, present yourself. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, for those of the channel who may, may not know what Black Mass is, why don't you go ahead and uh, let us know what that's, what that is yeah. all about. Black Mass is a, I like to call them an underground society because with most immersive haunts, they like to go with like, you know, some like spooky religious cult or like, you know, like slashers and killers, you know, all that type of stuff. Them, there's something totally different. It's like they, they, they address themselves as an organ as the organization, which that already kind of caught me off guard a little bit when I first got into them. But they're an immersive group. Um, you know, I believe you have to be 21 or 18 and over to go. And I sign a waiver, of course, it's a, it's a hands-on experiment, but lately they've been really focusing on trying to keep it, keeping that part out because of the whole social distancing and no touching and all that stuff, you know, for the safety of not only the participants, but for the actors and the crew. Um, they've been in the game for uh, a very long time, but Black Mass itself has only been around for about like two, almost three years, I want to say. And they've really branched out a lot a lot of people love what they do. It's, it's uh, when I think the fact that like the type of characters that they do cr come up with, these are people that you may have run into in your own personal life, or people that you've heard about like on like ID TV and stuff like that. You know, um, you know, crime investigation channels and stuff. So it's like, it's very real. It's immersive theater, but on a whole new level. You know what I mean? So that's that's something about them. I highly recommend anyone who hasn't done anything to definitely try them out they've they'll they'll open the door and welcome you with open arms and maybe even an open casket i don't know i don't know you know something like that <laughs> this little... is that go ahead uh yeah what i was listening to one of your recent podcasts um mm -hmm. and you were saying that when you had done it like you were a surprise because you had to go to a pickup location and yeah. a drop-off location and the actual experience was elsewhere at an unknown location which i thought was wild so did they just like pick you up and blindfold you or are you not able to say what they did uh, i'm not able to say exactly what they did i all i'm allowed to say is that uh there was a pickup location and a drop-off location that's it you know everything that happened in between is between is something that i like i checked between me and black mass no definitely i definitely i definitely wanted yeah. you know I thought we were trying to get the inside scoop, but, you know. Uh, I, I wish I could. Out. I wish I could, but, you know. Nah. You're <laughs> a, lot good, of these, a lot of these haunters, they're like magicians. It's like, yo, you don't tell. You don't tell yeah. how they do the tricks. Hey, man, you know? that's, that's, yeah. how they get, that's how they get so big in the industry is they never share their secrets or never show anything, you know. So that's exactly. that's much respect to them, man. They just want to keep their stuff exclusive for the experience of the people, you know. You hear so much about them, and you get curious, mm -hmm. so then you want to go try it out, so. That is definitely, yeah. uh, that is definitely, you know, that's okay in our books, man. We, we, we rather you do keep the secrets so then you can keep, you know, doing what you do every year. So, uh, yeah, th that's something. Yeah, man. It's, it's, I, I, I've been, I think it was due, through you. It was through you that I, I heard about Black Mass. Um, and the first thing I thought of it being, uh, being a wrestling fan, I'm like, oh, that's the, that's the finishing move of, uh, one of the wrestlers. Okay. So that's what he's doing. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, and then, and then, you know, I started watching your content and, and learning more about them through your content. So it, it gave me kind of a little uh, interest and in to see, uh, more about them one day, hopefully to kind of, to kind of maybe experience it. But yeah. have you guys ever done like an experience, like in a, like a immersive or extreme haunts like that? No, I, I am, uh, I know for, I could speak on behalf of Sammy, but I, I really am 
I don't, I'm not one to be t- like to be touched very much. So then I, I know that if I get touched, that there's going to be a reaction of some sort, and I don't want to do that. Uh, mainly, I mean, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty I can control myself, but I I just feel like if I'm getting pushed, and I, even though I know it's an experience, like I just it, it just the rage comes out of me like okay, it's go time. Oh yeah, no, everyone has their limit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's <laughs> it, it, it 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 comes out. It's, it's natural. It's coming out in, in me before before too. When I went up to uh, Castle of Chaos, they uh, certain limits were pushed, and I I got a little I don't want to say enraged, but like I. I'll say what I did. I hit a wall. Like, I punched a wall. You know what I mean? I didn't punch a hole in it. Uh, not that strong. But, like, I punched a wall, and they're like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. You know, it was just a little certain too much came out. Like, a little certain too much happened, and then just had to express it in some way. You know what I mean? It was just like, oh, God. That one was an all-night experience, though, right? Yeah, that one was – it was from 10.30 at night to about 7.30 in the morning. Wow. But I timed out, like, about, like, at 5.30. Yeah. Oh, so, so you can tap out at, at any point yeah. throughout the night. Yeah, I only strictly do haunt, and that's all there mostly is, except for one, which I won't say their name. Um, they only strictly do haunts that have a safe word. You know. Yeah, I know. What we know. We know which one you're talking about. You're yeah, talking I'm, about. I'm pretty sure Tell everyone it's... watching knows who. I don't like to give like I know I'm talking about it more, but it's like I won't say his name because I don't want to give him yeah. any. Yeah, he doesn't of... deserve our time. No. Exactly. One yes, because uh, I know that you've done Seventeenth Door, and like that's where me and Tony draw the line. Is like we don't want to be touched or mm-hmm. even even the slightest like you know because I know like one of the things that they said that they've done is like shooting like pebbles at you or like little things like that. Like I'm not trying to be touched or hurt or yeah. shocked or anything like that. And obviously, I know the Seventeenth Door they do a really good job of taking care of everyone. Um, and yeah. you know they have if you don't want to do something like they're very much like okay like next room or yeah or you can um, wear like a bracelet or whatever you need i was gonna say it's called a mercy pendant and because the mercy is their safe word and you get like i believe it's like it's like baseball three strikes and you're out you know what i mean you get like you can move out of two rooms and then the last time the third time that means you're out of the whole maze you know um yeah so uh you know but there is a mercy necklace or a bracelet i forgot if they changed it or not but um that you can get where like, all right, you get to experience it, but they won't touch you. They'll make fun of you. I gave one to my friend because he doesn't, he's the same way. He doesn't like to be touched at all, but he wanted to come with me. And um, I was like, all right, I'll get you the mercy necklace. And they didn't touch him, but they made fun of him. They were like, they said the meanest things to him. I, I got offended. I was like, oh my God. But it's like, it, it wasn't that bad. It was just like, they were just teasing him like, oh, why do you need that for you? Like, because my friend's about, about your height, Anthony. You know what I mean? He's like, he's like really tall, like, you know, like six something. And he's like, He's like, shouldn't we go into the short guy right here? Like, what the hell? Like, why, why are you, why are you holding, why are you wearing it? He's like, I don't want to be touched. And they're like, oh man, you know. But uh, other than that, like, Seventeen Door is really good. I highly recommend that for anyone who hasn't done Extreme Haunts but are curious, because the one thing that's different between all the other haunts I've done and Seventeen Door is you get to go in a group. You know, you uh, you're with your friends, so it's kind of like uh, I like to think of it as it's like a party mixed in with like a little bit of like remember the show jackass yeah a little bit of that you guys get to see each other get hurt and laugh about it like oh damn look at him like oh now it's happening to me oh my god you know and then um y'all be able to laugh at each other like dude in room number seven you were like screaming you were crying in this other room's like yo bro don't say that dog (laughs) (laughs) so um yeah i i find it fun but again it's all to everyone's limits you know yeah yeah it's it's funny you brought up the mercy the mercy necklace too. He, he, if he would tell me like something like oh you, you know I don't know why you're wearing it I'm like I'm wearing it to protect you man. <laughs> a friend of mine Rick Creeper, a uh, wonderful scare actor, um, he he always says like I only go through an extreme haunt if it's like all right the monsters get to touch me and I get to touch them back. I was like that's a straight up fight dog. That's not that's, a haunt. That's, that's, just, that's just, just a fight. <laughs> what time you get off, dude? We'll just do it in the parking lot. <laughs> right. Uh, Oh, man. Yeah, just wear your makeup and uh, or keep uh, whatever you've got on. Uh, keep your costume on, and we'll have a good time. Hell yeah, man! <laughs> Two a.m. <laughs> Two a.m. Man, I'll be there. I'll be taking a nap, but I'll be awake when that time comes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wait, so, I, 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 I'm just going back to the, the Utah one here. Mm-hmm. Like, prior to going to that, did you like get a ton of energy drinks or whatever, or did you no. like sleep during the day or just no, I, nor- just I... ride on normal rest? I just, I took a nap and I didn't eat anything. I only drank water, but I regulated how much I drank. Cause I was like, I don't want to have to pee 
while I'm in here because I don't know if they're gonna give me a restroom break. I didn't I didn't know what to expect. Right. And yeah, whole, definitely. Like even like even on the flight up there, I just kept thinking to myself, like I'm going out of state to go basically spend the night in someone's abandoned haunted house thing. Well, it's it's not abandoned because they're still all there, but it's like it's abandoned as the fact that it's not open to the public. Right. And I met these guys online. This is like how every like like movies, you know yeah, horror movie starts right here yeah this is how everything starts like you know what i mean it's like oh they met each other online and they ended up one of them ended up missing it's like oh my god like this is it like is this how i'm gonna die and that's on the flight leaving long beach you know what i mean so i'm like shit I'm like oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to cuss you know what i mean no but, you're good <laughs> okay okay cool, cool. there's no cool. limits um, on this channel in that case no i'm just kidding but um yeah no it was it was terrifying i i didn't i didn't know really how to prep i think i did like a few sets of push-ups but i was like wait what am i doing no this I don't want to like you. You know, like when you're just nervous and you don't know what to do. Yeah. And so you just start doing a little bit of everything that you, that like you may have thought you've heard of or you've like read in a book that like literally doesn't make any sense. Right. And um, it's yeah, it's just uh, it was nerve wracking. I remember calling my girlfriend or fiance, um, and she was just. I remember telling her like, I don't know if I can go to this. She's like, You've already spent this much money on plane tickets. This on a hotel you gotta go like there's if you come home and not do that then i don't know what to tell you like you you basically like you know you you spent so much for nothing i was like yeah you're right let's yeah you're right let's, <laughs> let's do it i'm sorry <laughs> yeah no i think that's uh yeah i mean I, I i there is one that i saw that was really cool and i don't remember the name of it i saw it like years ago that was really cool and it was like a it was like a haunted hotel kind of experience where it wasn't actually haunted everybody was actors so you, you mm -hmm. pay to stay in this room and throughout the night they have uh, the actors have keys to your room. They don't touch you or anything, but they like they, they have this storyline basically of the history of the hotel and everything. And throughout the night, each like like a ghost comes in and kind of tells you their story and kind of like you know gets all theatrical. And it happens throughout the entire hotel. And it's really cool because mm -hmm. you sleep in a bed and everything, and like they just come in and and you know they'll start acting and start screaming to wake you up. And you know I mean you're supposed to keep the lights off at all times and stuff and and then when they come in you know they have like their own they have like controlled lights for them and stuff so mm. it looks like theatrical and stuff I saw it one time I I, got, I can't remember for the for the life of me but it was a really cool thing and I was like man I would love to experience this this looks dope right you know that's how I feel about black mass it's all like cuz when I first got into black mass I was only 16 or 17 and with them it's 18 and over and um and even when I did turn 18, they were only doing shows in New York, right. I believe. So I was like, man, I really want to do Black Mass because you hear about all the crazy stuff going on through there. And um, when I turned 18, I was getting really into tattoos. And there's like a there's a scene on their documentary where they're tattooing someone like during the show, like all crazy. Like I was like, yo, I'd be able to get a tattoo from them. Yeah, it's going to be all scribbled, but why not? You know, it's like, like let's do it. And um, yeah, it's, uh, that, that one sounds interesting, though. It sounds kind of. I would hope they let you know beforehand, like, yo, people are going to come into your room while oh, you're Oh, yeah, sleeping. no, the whole experience, yeah, that's how they tell you. It's like, oh, have, okay. it all starts with, like, the uh, the bellboy coming up, and he's like, oh, I, I brought you tomorrow's paper because I know you're not going to be alive to see it. And then he yeah. starts telling you the story of, you know, the, the whole hotel, and he gets you kind of settled and stuff, and, and basically he just wishes you a good night. And then, like, I think a couple minutes or hour, or like an hour passes, and then, like, the first actor comes in, and then they, you know, they tell their story, and they get all theatrical and stuff, and they kind of get close to you, but they don't touch you or anything. Uh, okay. But it's really cool. Like, you start hearing, like, the history of the hotel, but it's, like, in, a, in an immersive experience like that. There we go. There we go. Yeah, no, I, I would want them to tell me at first, because I, I wear some funny pajamas sometimes. I don't want them making fun of me. You know what I <laughs> yeah, mean? Yeah, I'm, like... I'm just the guy that sleeps in his boxers, dude. So it's like, oh, you're, walk, <laughs> you're walking into a, quite the sight. Scare actor gets scared on that one. You know I know, right? I think I just made the scare actor scared at that point. Yeah. They're just going to go out and yeah. warn the rest of them, like, hey, don't go in that guy's room. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. That's hilarious. Yeah, you can't wear your Sunday holy uh, holy ones. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, oh, but man. it's it's cool, man. So, I, you know, I, I really like the, the immersive haunt. I know last year, too, I think, in, in Los Angeles, either last year or the year before, uh, a hotel in Los Angeles was gonna host a uh, immersive, giant game of like hide and seek, where it was like a, a, a like like scare actors. It was it was a whole story and everything. You had to play hide and seek, and basically they can grab mm -hmm. you when they caught you or anything. But it wasn't like too extreme or anything. Like if they caught you, they would okay. just grab you and take you out. But it, it was really cool because it had characters and everything, and it was like I think 13 floors where you can just play hide and seek, 
and they had a bunch Dude. of scare actors. It was like in a hotel, and I was like, "Fuck, man, I really want to do that." Because like hide and seek for you know grown ups in, in a haunt, you know Halloween. Right? It's like you just brought my child to life. Right? Oh man, did you guys do the hide and seek um, thing at Midsummer last year? I really wanted to, and we I think we just we're, oh, we were doing man. so much shit that day. It's just like we didn't yeah. have time to do it, but because you know Midsummer Screen, even Rick West said himself, they purposely load up with so much shit to do that you have to make hard decisions. So. Yeah, that was us yeah. throughout the entire weekend. But yeah, they were promoting that new movie, Hide and Seek, or uh, Ready or Not. Um, yeah, and that was how they were doing it. And it looked really cool. And I've heard good. I heard good things about it. Did you get a chance to do it? Yeah, it was fun. I I, I did it twice on um, on one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Because uh, one, I was just doing it just because. Like when we walked in, I was like, oh, there's no line yet. Let me get in line. And then the second time, because a friend of mine, Rick Creeper, again. He was like, dude, he texted me, he's like, dude, I'm about to I'm about to go up now. Like, you know, he, he was one of the scare actors for there. He's like, come on in. I'm like, all right, bet. So I go. It was fun. It was uh, me and my fiance both went in there and we had a, we had a blast. Again, it's like childhood. You know what I mean? Just like, but instead of like, you know, your friends chasing you and trying to find you with some some scare actor with a crazy, they had like crazy looking makeup and masks on and everything. Right. And like, um, oh man, you, you learn like right there that 30 seconds isn't a lot of time, man. Like, cause like, you're like, you think you finally found a spot, then like, oh man, the timer just stopped. You're like, shit. I mean, You're like, oh, that spot's just... better. Shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do they play the track from the movie? Like, I don't know if you've seen the movie or not, but yeah. there's like this whole like uh, ready or not like the song. The... Yeah. Yeah, the I played that song. song. Yeah. Oh dang. I, I went through there before even watching the movie, and um, I was like, when I finally did watch the movie, I was with my family, and I was like, oh, I, rem- I was like yelling, I was like, I remember this song, and they're like. <laughs> All what? right, cool. All Stop right. yelling. It's like, <laughs> like my bad, my bad. Hey, it's just that sounds ex- creepy. Just too. a bit of excitement right there, man. You just, you know, that's hilarious, man. So, talk to us about. Uh, of course, you know, you're you're really known now for, of course, going to the a lot of the extreme haunts that a lot of people don't really go to, and covering mm-hmm. those and giving us that coverage of that, and really uh, putting that out there. Um, and that's really cool because I don't think a lot of people uh, really cover those ones. You know, a lot of people will go to the home haunts. A lot of people will go to the standard haunts and stuff. So um, that, I think that's really cool that you, you cover the more extreme haunts that not a lot of people tend to like to go to. Um, yeah. And, and you kind of give that review of it and stuff. So uh, hats off to you, first of all, because I know for damn sure I could not do that. <laughs> that is. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know how you I don't know how you I don't know how you do it, man. I, I don't know either because uh, one thing I will tell you is it's like you know after doing it for so for for a good while, you do start to develop certain things now where it's like I don't want to say it's traumatizing because I signed up for it I knew what I was getting myself into right. and these people they weren't intentionally trying to hurt me you know um, but you do like at least for me you do develop a certain thing like I didn't care about getting shocked before, but now that's like my biggest. Thing. like if i see like people getting shocked in movies um or like if i like see like a light switch that's kind of exposing some wire i get like really freaked out and i start to twitch right because um for one haunt i'm not going to say the name of they were shocking me a lot and i was um oh god it was it was uh it was it was way too much and anything that's resembling to electricity like really like just brings back memories and I can feel it again. It's like a muscle memory type of thing, right. you know, where you feel it again. But um, other than that, it's fun. I like to think of it as like, yeah, it's painful, but it's like a tattoo. Anyone who gets a tattoo kind of knows this experience of like, it hurts, but it's almost an addiction. You know what I mean? Like once you like start getting more of them, you're like, dude, I want to get more and more and more. And that's how you get those people that are just like covered up within a year and stuff. Um, uh, it's uh, it's a weird it's a weird fascination with it, and also it's kind of fun to see how far can you take your your like your your body physically and right. mentally because a lot of them are now developing like psychological stuff and like you know really digging into your head, um, you know so it's kind of fun to see how far can I push myself at my own will, and um, you know just see see how far you can go yeah you know what i mean it's obstacle course just with some fake blood you know i get you yeah no and i and i and i, and I still relate on that on the tattoo level mm-hmm. right there man because when i got my first one the very next day my cousin tatted like all four of tats that are on my body right now when i got right. the first one like the very next day i got another one because i love the way <laughs> the it very next body. day damn yeah literally the next day i got another one on the other arm and uh the first one was uh batman superman 
There we go. Punisher. And then the fourth, or the third one was a lyric from a, one of the, my favorite uh, ska punk bands, The Interrupters. So okay. I, I got that. And then I got the Misfits one. Um, oh, hell yeah. On there. And the next one I want to get is uh, Frankenstein, the one back there, the picture. Shit, I don't, right there. Okay, uh, okay, I see, the, yeah. The classic that's, picture. Oh. Uh, I want to get that on my left shoulder. And then I already have number six planned, which is going to be a uh, scary-looking uh, a Joker, because I'm a huge mm-hmm. Batman fan, so I, I need to get a Joker tatted on my body somewhere. But, yeah, no, I, I, I totally get that addiction of, like, okay, you know, you, you, it, is a, it, it is one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's very painful, and you put up mm-hmm. with it, but after it's done, it's like, okay, what's going to be my next tattoo? It's like after yeah. you're done with that haunt, you're like, okay, what's going to be my next one? So I, I, I relate to that a lot. I mean, I, I know how that is uh, with certain things, and, and, and that makes that, that was actually a very good uh, comparison right there. Well, it's after you get one tattoo, yeah, no. you just want more. Yeah, me and my lady learned, like, you know, because when I first started dating her, she wasn't tattooed at all. Then she wanted to get one, and then as soon as she got one, boom, it went. She got one on her back, like, like right on the, like, kind of like the lower, like the bottom of her neck. Mm. And um, right after that, it was like, next one, uh, sternum. And then after that, whole leg in like a few, like how many months? Like a few months. She's just, yeah, like six months, wow. whole leg, just like all left side she like really got that tattoo bug like really bad uh not like bad but like you know it was a um it was just we're like we were like constantly going there to like uh we already knew the artists closely but then all the rest of the staff members were like oh hey what up you guys yeah man but that's crazy you're already planning out the other ones i like that joker idea yeah I no mean, it's a it's a specific joker there's this artist that i really like his name's alex ross um, mm-hmm. And he's a fantastic artist, and the way he drew Joker in this one Harley Quinn—it's like the most famous Harley Quinn picture that you could see out there, of uh, Joker in a nice tuxedo with Harley Quinn mm-hmm. around his arm, uh, and he's just smiling in. But you know, it, it's a really famous picture, uh, and I'll show it to you after we're done with the show. But yeah, it, it's yeah. really a big—it's it, it, one of my favorite ones. He just looks evil, and I like the way he looks. So, I'll try to get that next, but. Nice. So we've talked about your time with, of course, the Extreme Haunts, and we've talked about, of course, uh, you starting the channel. So let's talk about the uh, the more known haunts, I guess. Um, what what got you started going to those? I mean, were you going to those first before the Extreme Haunts? Oh, yeah. Um, my first experience with the Haunted House in general was at Universal Studios, the House of Horror, um, which is now replaced with uh, The Walking Dead, I believe. And um, I remember going there when I was about, like, 12 or 13 i know i was too old to be holding my dad's hand because i was i was that scared now i'll admit i don't, I don't care i'll admit that like yeah like i was freaked out at one point i grabbed my dad's hand my dad looks back he's like you good and i'm like no he's like let go of my let go nah. of my hand man. Like, he said no nah. like, yeah no i was terrified i, I never yeah. like i've heard stories about things like this but i never really went to one but then when we got done um and we had the monster chase us out of there you know, I was the first one out and I left my family behind. And um, I was like, I was scared, but I was like, I was like, dude, this is a crazy adrenaline rush. Like this must be what a roller coaster's like, which I still wouldn't get on those. I, I, I don't I don't believe in roller coasters. I'm I'm a short guy. I don't believe we should be in the air. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, um, uh, so I was like, this is, this is awesome. And then the next year when I'm about like probably 13 or 14, I get a call from my cousin saying, hey, got tickets to Not Scary Farm you want to go? And I was like, I've never been there. Let's go. Went to that, had so much fun. I was terrified still. Um, and, but it was, it was just a blast. I still remember the most of the lineup from that year because of how much fun, especially the one maze. I don't know what, why, but I love that, that crazy redneck theme, like devil's rejects, hills have eyes type of stuff. Right. And that's of course uh, slaughterhouse. That right. was my all time favorite maze. And, um, yeah, I so yeah, that's how it all started. And then when I heard about Queen Mary, I was like, all right, haunted ship. Now with haunt with like a more haunted theme and actual ghosts coming at you and stuff like that, quote unquote. It's like sign me up. And we went, had a blast. Best food that I had the best pizza I had in so long, man. I one of the, I don't know what the place was called, but yeah, it's the food that they have at Dark Harbor, man, it's so good. But um, as far as like all the other stuff, it's like man, I'm walking into history, right? And like they're like taking stories from history and putting them into like a theatrical like you know walk through experience you know it's like oh my god like the i believe what was it lullaby or was it um what was the one about the girl that went missing 
her name was like Taylor or Lucy or something like that. Or I think it's Lullaby, Lullaby about the girl that went missing. Drowned. Yeah. 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 That Scary one. Mary. So yeah, Scary Mary. There we go. Um, so walking through there, and they have like little plaque of her when you first walk by, telling like kind of like her little background, and it's like now you get to live like everything that like you know that like all like the the hauntings that she causes around the ship and everything and then of course people actually think and they see her in real life you know not being part of the show like something different it's like dude this is crazy like hell yeah man and then um yeah with the bigger haunts finally last two years ago got to go to the famous universal studios I haven't been there um but i would hear stories again that they follow you into the parking lot and all that stuff which I think they stopped doing that now for safety reasons, but um, right. yeah, so it's like finally going there, and I'm like, dude, best sets, like, you know, Knott's and Queen Mary, they do amazing job with set designs. Thing with Universal, though, I, it's because, like, you know, one, they're a movie studio, so of course it's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more up there, you know, so um, being able to walk through there and actually feeling like you're part of the movie, and uh, it was just, it was just amazing. Uh, the Blumhouse one was one of my favorites because it was like a mixture of everything. Right they've been doing and it was like oh man it was it was just crazy nice but yeah uh that yeah so yeah, what about you guys uh what was like you guys what was like your guys's first the first time i ever experienced a haunt was in 2008 and that was not scary farm uh okay. i was in the fifth grade at that time so that was the first time i've ever gone damn safe to say <laughs> i lasted about two hours couldn't do it and left Really? Damn. Tapped out in two hours. That's still uh, brave for a fifth grader. You're like, what, like how old? Like Probably like 10 or 11. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, dude. Um, I couldn't do it. I went through one maze, and I did the mine train, because at the time they used to have scare actors in there. So mm -hmm. I did that, uh, and then we just left. Um, I just couldn't do it. So then 2011 comes around. It's about, what, three, four years later, three years? Mm -hmm. um, and my buddy invites me to go to Halloween Horror Nights. And I'm like, all right, you know what, fuck it. Let's, let's try it out. I, I didn't, you know, I tapped out at Knott's in 2008. I got to redeem myself. Uh, got in there, immediately, you know, was fucking terrified. But then as the night went on, I had the best time of my life. And, and that's when I caught the bug. That's when I caught there we go. <laughs> the haunt bug right there. And 2012 came. My dad took me with my cousin, uh, a bunch of my cousins and everything, and we all went. 2013 came. Then 2014, then 2015, and I just kept going every year. And then 2016 was the year we finally got the front of the line and, and stepped it up to kind of make sure we do everything. And been doing mm -hmm. that ever since. Uh, you know, knots has been off and on. I, I, I returned to knots in 2012, uh, and kept I, I kept going every year since. Um, mm -hmm. And then last year was the first time that I hit Hay, uh, Hayride and Queen Mary, which I I really enjoyed as well. Um, and then, of course, last year we were exploring more home haunts, like uh, we did Bloodshed Brothers, and then we did the Pirates Cave. Um, so that this, was really cool. Yeah, Pirates Cave was dope. They, they special effects wise, they and and just the story overall was a really cool experience. They they yeah. really know how to do uh, a haunt, if I may say exactly. myself. I like that it's family friendly too. Like you know what I mean? You can bring the young ones along. Cause, right. Um, uh, I was supposed to take my little sister last year to that, but um, other other plans came about and we couldn't. Um, because you know, you know, uh, you know, as, as like a uh, older generation haunter, you mm -hmm. know, when you see like the younger generation want to get into, it, you're like, yeah, man, you're like excited, you want to motivate them to do it and all this stuff. And she saw, I don't know how, because I thought YouTube would block this ad, but she saw an ad for a 17 door. Oh wow! And she oh, wow. knew, yeah, she knew that I was going there. Like that first year, I, I was like in, I can't remember the year, but the first year that they happened, like. She heard that I went there because I would tell my folks about it, and um, and yeah, she was like, she was like, oh my god, did you see the guy with the pig mask and the doctor's outfit? And I'm like, that's too good of a guess. How did you know, kid? How did you know that that was like, exactly <laughs> what one of the characters looked like? I was like, kiddo, what are you doing? She's like, I saw it on YouTube. I was like, they don't block that on YouTube, kids. I was like, just like I don't know, but yeah. So it's like you know, she'd been wanting to go when I heard about Pirates Cave, reading up about them, talking to the guys. I was like, dude, this is perfect right here. You get to go get the kids into there. And um, beautiful, beautiful, like, all, like, the lights around the house. Right. And just, like, all the animatronics that they have were just well done. It was just, it was amazing. 
Right, and I, and I would say with Pirates Cave too. I mean, they, it's cool that they offer that first two hours for the kids to walk through and, and do something. And but even when it goes on, I still think it's not too extreme, not too, you know, scary for you know some kids to actually go through. I mean, it, it is. It's mostly it's special effects, and they have uh, really good scare actors that come down and and do it. Um, and, and they do a really good job of, of, you know, with the small space they got, they do a good job of pulling it off. And I think that's what really what we enjoyed about it last year. I think we went through that maze like four or five times because uh, we were invited out to uh, conduct an interview with them prior and. You know, he gave us a lights on tour with everything and how special effects work, and then you know we we uh, we got to go through it a couple times, lights on and lights off tour, uh, walkthroughs. So that was really cool. But um, yeah, I, I I really after seeing those two haunt, home haunts, I really am excited for this year um, because this year is looking like the year of the home haunts, man. It looks like that uh, you know home haunts, drive through haunts. You know, it's drive through haunts something new. So I'm curious to see how they're gonna pull that off. We I know we already got our tickets for the uh, OC one. Coming up. Yeah, the, I was gonna I was gonna ask you guys about. Have you heard about that? It's like called like Urban Legends or something. Yeah, like that, Urban or? Legends. So uh, mm-hmm. I know one of my one of our our, our team members uh, got uh, tickets to it to mm-hmm. to experience it October 10th. Uh, so I'll be tagging along with them to get footage of that. Mm-hmm. Don't know how I'm gonna film it because I don't know if there's gonna be stuff on both sides of the car. So I'll probably be jumping back and forth with the camera. Yeah. But you know, I mean, it, 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 we'll we'll figure out something. But yeah, I, I think that uh, you know, Home Haunts. They really have a lot to prove and show, and I can't wait to see what they can bring this year too. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I feel like it's like you know they're able to handle uh, a crowd a little bit better because if you if you if you've seen the crowds at Universal, oh, it's yeah. chaotic. You know what I mean? It's Even like not. not chaotic is like people are crazy, but the amount of people that just show up to these things, it's 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 at first you're like amazed, you're like wow, look at all these people that are interested in the same like you know we all have something in common right here. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. It's gathering people of like mindedness, um, but also you're thinking too like damn, I would hate to work security this night. You know what I mean? Like you having to control this much people. So with home haunts, I feel like you're able to kind of handle it a little bit better. Um, and two, it's all like you know, I feel like uh, some of the home haunts I've been through like you know like in the like you know, like when you go into trick or treating and you go into like some random person's home haunt. Yeah. Most of the times I've seen them, they're just like maybe like, like one scare actor and a lot of animatronics. I was like, you can do a lot with animatronics. I've right. seen some of those. You walk down the alley that 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 that, that, uh, that excuse me, <laughs> you walk down that uh, that aisle of just animatronics at like Halloween Club. That's right there is already freaky because you got things going on on both ends. You don't know which one shoots out airs, right. which one like you know jump towards you and it's all like yeah so you can do a lot with that type of stuff so i'm excited to see more of that also yard displays i know a lot of like some people are thinking about doing that i know rotten apples is thinking about doing just a yard display this year right as they said on midsummer screams uh that very first like panel that they did the one that you were talking about that they they did at night and everything yeah um they're thinking about doing a yard display so i was like that's creative it's still spooky give something for people to try but no, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm going back to the urban legends. That one's gonna be really interesting because we all we all think of the same thing. I feel like we all think the same things. But it's like, is someone gonna get run over or is someone yep. gonna bump someone else's car? I you know I, I mean, it's my theory for that right now is I'm thinking they're gonna do it much like Hayride, where you stop at certain points and the scene plays out, and then you you're told to move on after that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that would be the smart way to go. That's how, that's how I'm thinking. But yeah, that's that's my thing. Is like I hope, I pray to God that we can make it to October tenth with this one, and I don't hear any news about someone getting ran over at this haunt or something. Because yeah. not only would it be unfortunate for that person, but it, it would just I think uh, be an overall just kind of it kind of shuts down that idea of drive-through haunts. You know what I mean? So it, it is very yeah. it's a very new and immersive experience as well as keeping with that uh, COVID nineteen guidelines but it, you know i think it, it really uh it's something new and, and usually new is creative so we'll see what they can do with this definitely definitely and, yeah um, uh, well i'll go back to my first time i went to a haunt yeah um my first time was uh my first haunt i actually ever went through was as well as at house of wars uh at universal studios way back in the day and i agree it was pretty terrifying i, I don't forget how old i was I just remember I was with my French cousins, um, mm-hmm. and so there was already a language barrier. Um, and it was just me, him, and his fiance, and I was like, "Uh," and I got really scared. But I was like, "I got to keep going," but I can't talk to these people. Like I can talk to these people, but it's like, 
it's kind of difficult. We actually have to like be looking at each other to communicate. Right. And yeah. then I got stuck like right at the end when the scare actor comes out, like when they're supposed to chase you out, and I got stuck there for like 15, 20 seconds. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know what to do. You're in my way, but like I don't want to run into you. Like, ah, oh, this is so, this is so much. <laughs> and then uh, the same, you know, the Tony had went to uh, not scary farm. I went to and. I remember my mom's like five five, five six, and I'm a pretty big boy too. And I just remember the entire time, I had my mom walking in front of me, and I had my hands on her shoulders. <laughs> and every time I got scared, like I would squeeze my hands on my mom's shoulders until yeah. like a week she had shoulder pain because of me. Uh, every time I got scared, I was just like, ah. Safe to say, uh, Sam's oh, mom's uh, shoulders were bruised that that week. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Were. But I, I've gotten better. Um, I thought it was going to be really bad. Um, you know I, what? I no, now, now he now he's got the bug. He loves these things, and he is oh, okay. I love him. equally as devastated as both of us for this. And he's just yeah. like, he really want he really wanted to experience knots again this year. Horror nights. He didn't get to he didn't yeah. get to make Queen Mary last year, and he was really looking forward to doing that this year. Um, yeah. So it, yeah, I, was, I, I definitely I have to that Sammy, man. Sammy, Sammy's a trooper. There we go. Yeah. Do you guys scare easy? Like, um, you guys, like, oh, like, easy oh yeah. Scare? Sammy oh, does. Yeah. Over the yeah. years that yeah. I've been going, it's starting to go down a little bit more now. Where okay. it, it really, you really got to throw me off guard to you know get me. So it's yeah. like if I'm not aware or if I'm just not paying attention, like of course that's when I'm gonna get scared because I'm just like, oh shit, I, I was focusing on one thing, didn't see you coming. Yeah. But you know, you, you go to these events every year, so you start knowing the cliches of what what scares are gonna come and and what. I mean, it it doesn't ruin it for me. I mean, I just I like going through these mazes because I like to see these set designs. I like to see the story told and and how good the mm-hmm. characters are. And usually every time I go, I'm always impressed. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, for if I go through something for the first time, I don't. I'm going in blind and I try to avoid because I know there's some people that will go to like the media nights and stuff and post up the walkthroughs the, the very same night. So I, I'm the guy that likes to avoid all that because I want to go in spoiler free. I want to be surprised and see everything to myself in my, my own eyes. So yeah. uh, I think for the first walkthroughs, you know, you'll get me a couple times with jumps. And it, depending on what the property is or, or what story they're telling uh, can have a better effect on me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not – I'm getting to the point now where it's a little bit harder to scare me, but I can still get scared. I feel you. I feel you. Have you guys ever got like that, like that tense neck when you get too scared? That's what that is. Yeah. That that sucks. Like man, like I, I still get that. I'm I'm like surprised because it's like I, just like you know doing this for, like for years, and again you do like I do know like the the certain like um, the certain tactics and the the ways they set up certain things. It's right. like all right, they want you to look this way because I see I see the curtain right there, and actor's gonna come out right there. It still gets me every time, though. You right. know what I mean? Like, I know it's coming, but I don't know why. It still gets me. Then you get that, like, like, shock feeling in your neck. Yeah, and, like, it just hurts, and it's like, oh, like, I feel like you like you just did, like, some heavy lifting, but no, I just right. I just got scared right now, you know? So it's it's weird. Um, the last place that happened to me was at Midsummer Scream was Desert Decay Manor, and, like, I remember being so freaked out because they had, like, an area where it was just, like, those rooms where it's just fog and lights, and you can't see what's in front of you. Right. It was one of those, and I was like, and I saw silhouettes. So I was like, I know someone's right there. I see them. They're going to get me. And then when they finally did, I remember just like, pop right there. And I was like, oh, for like a good like two hours, like my neck was just killing me. And I'm like, my friend was like saying like, damn, dude, you still get that? Because the first time we were going to haunt, he was like, I would get that like in every maze, in every right. single maze, like at Scary Farm or, um, you know, any other place we'd go to. It'd just be like, like, oh, man, my neck, my neck, you know? So it's like, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, I, I will say the Hall of Shadows definitely got me a lot. That place was mm-hmm. made me very uneasy all the time. Yeah. Uh, I would say, and this is a bold statement I'm about to make, <laughs> I would say the Hall of Shadows was more scary to me than any other haunt I went to because I just did not feel safe because – yeah. I think with the Hall of Shadows, though, it's more of an enclosed space. You know, rather, you know, you have vendors set up, you have all the mazes set up, people walking around, so you don't know who's who or who's a character or not. And it's way more dark in that room than it is when you go to a ha- haunt outside because it's got all the lighting and shit. Yeah, I will say. And a lot of people, whether or not they're paid to be a scare actor in that room or not, they enjoy scaring you. Oh, yeah. And if. They can get a glimpse of you being scared. You are not safe in that room because yeah. one will hit you, 
then another one will hit you, and then another one will hit you. It's ridiculous. And I think it's only because a lot of these people, you know, are professional scare actors. You know, they work at Queen Mary, they work at Knott's, work at Universal. They do a home haunt or one of the other haunts around SoCal or even, you know, even the world, some of them. So I think this is like one of their first opportunities to scare again. And they got, they're like, let's get that rust off and let's go in. Yeah. And so I definitely was a lot more terrified. There. I remember this one guy kept messing with me. I think he messed with me like probably like four or five times on that Saturday at just different times. But I think he recognized me and was like, oh, I know I can get this guy. Even if I just clap my hands right now, he's about to jump. When you're two walking yeah. fucking towers walking, you can't miss us. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, so. Man. Do you guys get recognized a lot when you go to certain haunts? Like, you know, because um, you guys have been doing the YouTube stuff for a while? This year was a little bit more recognizable than the year prior because I think this year we were mm -hmm. starting to get more of a following. Um, so it was really, it, it's still, at least I can speak for me, it really mm -hmm. is weird when we get recognized because, yeah. you know, I. I Outside of what I do here, I'm just a normal guy who goes to his uh, everyday 6 to 2.30 job, uh, yeah. you know, collects a salary and gets his benefits and then comes home and then does this for the hell of it. Um, and, and when someone comes up to you and recognizes you for what you do or mm -hmm. you have other people that, like, don't recognize you but, like, oh, yeah, I remember – I think I've seen one of your videos before. I mean, that's happened mm -hmm. to us um, – Adam the Woo, we've we've seen him a bunch of times throughout hot season, and like we would talk to him a bunch. And I gave him a card, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I think I've I, I've seen a couple of your guys' videos." And I'm like, "Oh, that's, oh wow, I don't, I, you know, it's like, uh, what are the odds of that?" But no, when you, when you get when you get fan interactions, you know, it, it is definitely uh, truly a blessing and truly um, still kind of awkward for us because we're still, I bet. like I said, we're just normal guys, you know, and we just decided to start a channel to talk horror and, and haunts and. When you know, when you have fans that come up to you and like, oh my god, I watch your videos, I love your content, thank you for doing what you mm -hmm. do, and it's like, it, it really right there it shows you that you're not doing this for nothing. Yeah, it's so. like you know, so people appreciate your stuff. Uh, well, what about my scare actors though? Do you guys like inside the haunts? Do you guys get recognized yeah. and get that special treatment? You know what I mean? Well, well, I, I get a I get a very special treatment. Um, I have a nice nice big target on my back um, yeah. because. My great friend Tony here likes to let every scare actor we, um, whether we know them personally or we don't, he, mm -hmm. this guy right here, he gets scared. You should just go after him. Um, so uh, it doesn't help that you sleep at haunts either. So that you know, that's well, that's thing. that's neither here nor there. Um, but back back to interactions with outside outside of scare actors, like I'm just so thankful anytime someone enjoys oh, yeah. what we're doing. Like even if like I get happy when just one person watches our video. And, uh, and says, you know, they enjoyed it. Or even if, even if they didn't enjoy it, I'm just happy someone watched it and yeah. someone cared enough to click on the video. Right. And if they keep coming back and subscribing, like, that makes me even more happy. And if they say hi to us in person, I'm just beyond thankful. Like, because I, I, I'll say this, like, till probably the end of time. It's like, we're just two big hooligans here. Just two guys who are friends, who are best friends. I just get to talk about something that we both enjoy now. And people watch it, and it's like, what the heck? Like, right. that's all we do, you know what I mean? And then we bring guests on and just get to pick their brain. I love hearing people's stories, and I love getting to know people. So it's just like the fact that people enjoy what we're doing mm -hmm. makes me extremely happy. Um, and so I'm, I, I'm really happy with that. And with scare actors, you know, I'm glad that some of them recognize me, um, and they're really trying to get me scared. If I can make their night any better because I'm an easy scare, then, like, let it be because like I don't get to the scared of the point like oh my god I didn't pee my pants or anything like that but it's like I'm gonna give you a jump and it's yeah. gonna be a big reaction. I think we really got recognized in November of last year because we did our scare actor appreciation month on the podcast, mm -hmm. and you know we started with a, a slate of people and we had like pretty much almost the entire month ready for November like every day we were shooting a podcast and putting them out and really just you know showing you know sharing stories of haunt you know because people missed haunt at that time and I I think what was the coolest thing was. When it started catching on and people started seeing these episodes, a lot of scare actors started hitting us up on Instagram. Like, hey, do you guys got any room? I want to be on the show. Like, that right there is truly a blessing. And towards the end, we had to say no to a lot of them because not only were we, 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 were, we were overbooked, but we actually had to extend, like a, a, I think, a week in December just to finish off our, our scare actor appreciation month. And the toughest thing, and you know this more than anything, the toughest thing is saying no in the business because... 
I, yeah. you know, I was taught, you know, never say no to an opportunity because it, it could be a good experience, a bad experience. No matter what, you'll learn from it going forward. And I think that's something that I've loved about me is I've never said no to any guest or um, any opportunity that we've ever gotten because I really want to, you know, learn from these experiences, whether they be bad experiences or not. Luckily for us, every person we've interviewed, every event we've been to have not been bad experiences. So I, I'm very thankful for that as well. But I think the biggest thing, too, is just, you know, it was the, the toughest thing was it was to say no to a couple of scare actors. But. Uh, for the, if anyone's listening out there, I mean, I know I know we ain't doing anything this season. So if you want to be on the show, come on down. <laughs> there you go, there um, you go. What about you, bro? Do you ever get recognized for your work? Oh yeah, like uh, for the videos. Sometimes it's mostly by scare actors, and um, it's just, it's funny because it's always during the haunts. Like I remember at the Seventeenth Door, one of them recognized me, and I guess he he wanted to be sure, so he lifted up my sleeves and he saw the tattoos, and he was like, oh, "It's you," and I'm like. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? It was a combination of both because I got like a little, like when I was saying special treatment, it's like, that's what he called it. But it just ended up me getting a little bit more, a little bit more, I don't want to say hurt, but like a little bit more messed with than some of the other people in my group. Right. And um, it's it's funny, but like it did leave some marks. You know what I mean? It's, um, yeah. so that's, that's like, that's one, that's how I like, those like the moments where it's all like, oh man, I feel honored. And of course, when other people are like, oh my God, dude, I watch your videos. My first reaction is uh, like, it's like, what, really? Because like, I don't believe it. Because it's like, you know, um, I'm uh, just like you guys, like I'm shocked, but I'm grateful that someone's watching my stuff. You know what I mean? Right. I just saw like, dude, like you sat there and watched my, watch me just ramble, dude. I thank you so much. Like, you know, like I, like I really appreciate everyone. I remember this one, this one couple um, who I still talk to, uh, I was passing out business cards like you know um in front of midsummer scream and i was like i handed them one i was like hey check out my channel they're like they saw it they're like scared again i'm like yeah i was like dude we watch you all the time i was like no way what the hell <laughs> um yeah it, it was pretty cool but getting recognized by scare actors it's a little bit more uh i want to say a little bit more fun because then they start to mess with you like i remember again at the 17th door someone yells like oh we got scaredy cat here and then it's like involved it involved my head being shoved to the wall not hard but like enough to where people in my group were like wait did he did he upset them in some way like what right. the hell like what's going on it was it was pretty crazy but um it's memorable and it's fun and um you know i'm, I'm grateful for it man it's, it's awesome it's awesome but, if yeah, i can no, leave uh if i can leave the audience with this one right here yeah. is that uh just know both knights of horror and scaredy cat vasquez are very very grateful and thankful for yeah. each and every one of you guys because uh, without you guys, we don't do what we do. Um, exactly. We enjoy making the content. We enjoy sharing it with you guys. And all out, we, we just uh, appreciate uh, all the support. Um, and rest assured, even though we're not getting much this season for Haunt, you can, be, uh, you can, be, uh, you can guarantee that uh, we're still going to deliver you the best content. We're still going to be doing our best to uh, get through this. And come 2021, we're going to have ourselves a good uh, celebration uh, for haunt season. We're all going to have that bug. Everyone's going to meet up again. It's going to be fun. Everybody's going to you know, reminisce and have a good time. So I can, I can promise that one right there. That's true. That is true, man. I'm excited just to have like the, the, uh, the, the markets open up again, like Salem's Market and uh, Spook Show and... There was another one that was going down too. I can't remember the name of it. Oh man! Oh, Sugarman Gallery, the Terror Market. Right. Them, and, you know, uh, I I drive by the Halloween store or the Halloween Club um, in La Mirada a lot for work, and every time I drive by there, I'm always looking back, and it's just like, man, I miss walking through there, walking through the store, walking through the parking lot, seeing all the the tents of vendors and everything. Yeah, 2021 is gonna be gonna be exciting. Dude, that's like right in my backyard, man. I'm right up the freeway. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That's dope. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. A lot of haunts are going to feel like they're like, all right, got some rest. Now we got all this extra energy. Go and take it out. Take it out in a good way of like to the guest and really providing something ex like crazy. Might see a lot more extreme hunts this like coming next year, man. Hoping. Fingers crossed. You know? Fingers crossed. 
For all those uh, extreme hunters out there, if you guys want to check out reviews on those, of course, Scary Cat Vasquez has you guys covered on that. Go check out his channel. Also, follow him on all of his social medias. Uh, I believe Scary Cat Vasquez all across the board, right? Yep. Instagram, YouTube. Uh, I have a Twitter. I don't go on it. I, I don't really. I don't get Instagram Twitter is where you want to be anyway. Yeah. There we go. Instagram, um, podcast, Hunt Talk Audio. You know, That's check right. it out anywhere you can get your podcasts. Stitcher, uh, Google, Spotify, all that stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Take it. Yeah, uh, Brother, it's been awesome finally doing this, and we got to do this again yeah, soon. Um, Definitely, we, we do. We, we, we really enjoy talking with you, and we can't wait to see you out there in the haunt world, man. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to do big things, brother, and we're going to be right there beside you supporting you any way we can. So, we with you guys, man. Yeah, yeah. We're going to build together. Going to build together. Oh, Sammy, mm -hmm. you want to ask him the final question of the podcast? Oh, yeah. This is – everything else did not matter. This everything was easy up to this point. Oh yeah, man! This is the only thing that matters, and if you get this wrong, you may not get you may not be able to come back. Ooh. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. All right. What is your favorite? What is your favorite horror movie? Horror movie? Yeah. It's um, it's got to be Texas Chainsaw. Love that crazy the original stuff. Original? original, yeah. You got it right. Wow. Yeah. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. Uh, just to let you know, there was yeah. no wrong or right answer on that one. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just wanted to like, wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we only uh, we only like the uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D on this channel. No, we made up back. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Video just cuts off. It's like, oh man. Uh, what about you guys? What's your guys' favorites? Killer clowns from outer space. Killer clowns. Uh, yeah. You know what? Yeah. I, I this is a question that's really difficult for me because. My gut, in, my my normal answer will be us, but I really think it is the Strangers because that movie did mess me up. Which and one? I think that's the Strangers. Oh, the Strangers! Oh God, yeah. that movie literally messed me up. So, like, I will I never said. live or go. I, I don't want to ever go out into an area yeah. where there's like no one around me. Not down. The, that line that they say, like when the woman's like, "Why are you doing this to us?" and they're just because like, you were home. That line literally gives me goosebumps every single time I watch it. Because it's like, that's all it takes? Like, usually most killers is like, oh, you, you trespassed. And like, Texas Chainsaw, you trespassed. Killer clowns from outer space, they're, they're from outer space. They're invading the, there's there's a motive, you know? Yeah. But that, it was just like, we were walking through the woods, saw you guys at home. They, they, were really walking. they were literally driving through a neighborhood and went, yeah. Let me knock on this door. <laughs> oh, man. it's That movie scares me. And in fact, they made a second one. I haven't seen the second one yet. Yeah. Yeah wasn't too bad yeah it was pretty good but like uh, i i know that we probably have to cut soon but the idea mm -hmm. of just they played with them they could yeah. have easily just taken them out like but no they yeah, want no. no they want to take their phones destroy them they just want to slowly but surely mm -hmm. agonize them all night until i guess it begins i think it begins like at two in the morning yeah all the way up to like sunrise and then at that point they're finally like why are you doing this? And then he's like, "Oh, you were home." And you're yeah. Like, and then, a... I think you said "us," right? Did you? Was that like one of the other ones you said "us"? Yeah, definitely. I loved "us." "Us" is wild. That one was wild, mostly because, like, yeah, I like. I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but I, I do like to dabble a little bit in that. And I was thinking, like, what if there is clones of us? You know what I mean? Like, what if I wouldn't, like, pass, I wouldn't like, put it past the government one bit. Yeah, no. you know what I mean? It's all like, dude, like, I, I doubt it's for a hands across America type of thing like they were doing, but it's like, what if there is something like that going on? Mm -hmm. And, and um, it's like, dude, that, like, because there's certain areas that are underground that are off limits. What if that's where they're all at? You know what I mean? Exactly. All these damn tunnels and stuff like that. It's like, dude. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just going to say this. I feel bad for my clone. Every time I have to eat that raw rabbit every time I eat, Ooh -wee, I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. I know, right? That. <laughs> I felt bad for those bunnies, man. Like I used to work at, I used to work with rabbits that were at a Petco. <laughs> and I was like, just thinking back, I was like, man, I remember that one rabbit. I remember he was, he was mean, but he was still nice. He was still a nice guy. He didn't deserve that. What the hell? Like, <laughs> what the hell? All right. Uh, in the, in the words of a uh, house with thousand corpses here, uh, run rabbit, run. Oh God. Gotta love house thousand corpses, man. That's a good That's movie. That's such a good movie. Yeah. Um, Brother, thank you for coming on and taking the time out of your day to do this, man. That was really uh, awesome of you to do this. Uh, for those of you watching, go subscribe to Scared Cat Vasquez and follow him, of course, on Instagram uh, under the same name. Uh, keep involved in what he's doing. 
uh, and check out his podcast as well. Available anywhere where you can listen to podcasts, of course. Uh, that is going to do it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to follow us on social media at Knights of Horror on Twitter and at the Knights of Horror on Instagram. Of course, check out our merch shop where we have a bunch of merch relating to the podcast. Um, East versus West, Shoot the Shit. Uh, the new Werewolf logo, the Blood Moon logo, all that good stuff. Face masks are all on there. Go check it out. Uh, links in the description below. Of course, I'm your host, Anthony. That's your boy, Sam, right there. Scaredy Cat Vasquez. We are Thank signing off for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we will see you guys next week. Peace.